Today we're doing something a little fun. I'm going to share six unpopular opinions about being an OBGYN. Welcome back everybody. My name is Jen Lincoln. I'm a board certified OBGYN and I am excited to talk about this topic today. And I hope that you like my shirt here. I got it on Etsy and I will be putting the Etsy shop's name down in the references and show notes. Um, so feel free to check that out because I'm all about science. Okay, a little different setting today. It's gorgeous outside and so I just had to take advantage of it. So hopefully somebody doesn't start revving up a leaf blower or something in the middle of this. So let's cross our fingers. Okay, so I do a lot of educational content here, but I wanted to have a little fun this week. And so I wanted to share some unpopular opinions about being an OBGYN. Get ready to have a sneak peek into our little world. Sounds like a race car. Okay, unpopular opinion number one. I can't get along with people who can't just talk openly about vaginas. Okay, what I mean about that is if I'm out with my friends and, you know, some of them are in medicine, some of them aren't, if we start talking about, you know, the latest recommendation for pap smear screenings or HPV or whatever, if you can't hang with that, I don't think we can be friends and I'm not trying to be rude, but I feel like that is my world. And um, yes, yeah, so we talk about that stuff at the dinner table and that's why I'm a little strange and that's why OBGYNs and midwives and labor and delivery nurses, like we tend to get along really well together. And sometimes our spouses have to be like, honey, honey, this isn't the time or the place. And like, maybe they're right some of the time, but most of the time, I just love talking about my job. Don't worry, I'm never sharing patient information or anything like that, but I guess I'm being kind of silly here. But my point is that if, if you start to get grossed out when I talk about basic anatomy, biology, those kinds of things, then probably we're not gonna get along. So we should just know that from the start. Okay, unpopular opinion number two. Maybe I should call these like surprising opinions or just things that are in my head. I don't know, whatever, but we're going with it. So we're just gonna keep going. Okay, number two. I don't understand why everybody doesn't just try to take out their own IUD at home. Here's my story. So I've had one, two, three, four IUDs, four IUDs. And two out of the four, I have just removed myself and the reason is because one I was a resident and we wanted to start trying to conceive and I didn't have time it makes you wonder why I thought I had time to have a baby but whatever it worked out um, but my point is that I didn't have time to like make a clinic appointment so I figured we just try and I was able to you know you just reach the strings and pull and it was easy and whatever um, so then the second time when I was you know I had my next IUD in place same thing ready to try and start trying to conceive our second I was working in a place where I didn't feel comfortable sharing my plans with anybody which is kind of sad and I don't work there anymore. But um, so again, I just took it out. I remember being very out of breath afterwards. That one took some work. But anyway, my point is, is that it's not dangerous to take your IUD out at home. In fact, I just read a paper that talked about how if people knew that was potentially an option, they might be more likely to choose the IUD because they like having that control of being able to remove it when they want to. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can, you just, you know, you wash your hands, you reach up, you try, and if you can't get it, like, don't keep going, or if you're in pain, stop. And not everybody can. It has to do with your anatomy, your flexibility, your insane desire to do it yourself, and how motivated you are to be strange like me, um, how long your strings are, so you can do it if you want to, but that's just my opinion. We're not judging you when you come in for removal, What's, not whatsoever. It's totally legit. I'm just lazy. So I was like, I'll just DIY this IUD removal myself. DIY IUD. I like that. Unpopular opinion number three. If we haven't talked in like 10 or 15 years, it's kind of rude to then message me and be like, hey Jen, your kids are so cute. By the way, I just found out I'm pregnant and I was wondering what this ultrasound report meant. Could you tell me? Okay, thanks. Bye. And I love helping people. Don't get me wrong and I'm not trying to be a queen bee. But it's strange when we haven't talked at all and you're like pretending to like interact with something in my life so that you don't have to call your doctor or midwife to get an interpretation on something. It just doesn't feel good. It feels like you're being taken advantage of. Now to my friends who, you know, we talk all the time and you've asked me these questions before, and like, yes, I'm here for you, just like you're here for me. That's a different story, but I'm talking about this random, like it's like when somebody contacts you on Facebook and it's like, hey girl, you look awesome. I know it's been 15 years. Wow, high school was so long ago. I'm selling this Rodin and Fields eyeshadow. Like, would you, you know, and it's just, that's just weird. So it's kind of in the same line. So boundaries are a good thing. They're healthy. And I think it's just important to respect them. I'm not trying to be a queen bee, just trying to 
have some healthy boundaries. The therapists say it's good, so I'm trying. Unpopular opinion number four, and this is a serious one. We don't treat people in our own field as well as we should, especially being healthcare providers of women and people with vaginas. What do I mean by that? I mean that we take care and we advocate for pregnant people, and then when we ourselves get pregnant or have a baby or have a pregnancy complication or want to take time off postpartum, we do not treat our own people well. We have this mentality of like, come on, you know what it is, get back to work, do it, work up until you're in active labor. Don't you dare start your maternity leave early. How soon can you get back here? Because covering your call is really hard. And I just find it really interesting that we are supposed to be the women's healthcare advocates and we do so poorly treating our own people with the kind of respect that we are advocating for our patients. So I'm hoping it's changing. I feel like maybe it is. I feel like more people are speaking out, more physicians, more midwives, you know, we're demanding better. Um, and we are trying to take back this patriarchal view of like, you know, pregnancy is terrible and it's just a burden on your partners. I'm hoping we're getting there. I truly do. Unpopular opinion number five. Some of you might not like me for this, but I'm just gonna be honest. I think it's really strange when a patient's father is there at the birth of his grandchild and he sits like at the foot of the bed and watches his daughter give birth. Okay, so what I mean is not, not the father of the baby, I mean the patient, so her father. And I just feel like it's great that people are close, but like that's just like a little strange for me. And maybe one of the benefits of COVID is that we have less visitors and birth is more intimate. And in some ways that's beautiful. In other ways, I know it's very stressful for people, but it's just weird. And I know probably I'll get some hate for this, but I don't know. I just think about like my own relationship with my dad. And again, I know things are different and I'm generalizing here, but I'm just putting myself out there because I'm just being honest. And that's why I'm calling them unpopular opinions. You don't have to agree with me, but just like, I don't know. Okay, my last unpopular opinion. There's never a good reason to use the word moist. I hate the word moist. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And now that I've said this, anybody who knows me and watches this, they're probably going to torture me and use the word moist as many times as they can. Okay, what do I mean by that? Again, if you're a patient and we've ever interacted or, you know, use the word moist, like, I'm not judging you. This is totally my own problem and I realize it's silly and stupid, but I don't know. You know how like you just have a word and you're like, I don't know, like wet, that's good. Oh, a hummingbird just flew by. The hummingbird is joining our, our YouTube. See, like that's how I feel when I hear the word moist. I'm like, Ooh, fly away like a hummingbird. Okay, anyway, I don't know. It's just weird and I know that I'm weird. Um, and that's all, so that's, that's my unpopular opinion. And it's kind of a hard one to have when you're an OBGYN because lots of things are, lots of things are wet. So there we go. Okay, you've just taken a deep dive into my weird brain. I've shared some things here. Maybe you agreed with them, maybe you didn't. Hopefully it was all just for a good laugh. If you have any questions or if you have any unpopular opinions about your job, I would love to hear them in the comments section. Um, it's all about sharing here, friends. I hope you have a great week. Stay safe, get vaccinated when you're able, and I'll see you soon.